Today, I'm giving you guys a sneak peek at the touchscreen interface design for PyKiln. If you're new to PyKiln, PyKiln is an open source, web-based kiln controller that runs on an ESP32 running MicroPython. In my last video, I announced that I'm making a pivot to the M5 stack. The M5 stack is a ESP32 with a touchscreen, an SD card, uh, a speaker, I2C connection, and a whole lot more. Um, it's everything that I was trying to do in a nice little package uh, for a pretty affordable price. Uh, one of the things that I don't like about this, though, is it's kind of got a bloated proprietary system on it called UIflow. Uh, it's designed for loading your own apps that run on the ESP32, um, and it's designed for their own little ecosystem uh, of hardware, which is great, but I really want to make sure that you know the code that I write can run on other hardware and I'm not locked down to a single device. So I got vanilla MicroPython running on the M5 stack. Uh, it took a little while to find all the different libraries and I had to find a uh, version of uh, MicroPython that was pre-compiled and ready to go for this. Um, but I got little examples working with buttons and the speaker and the touchscreen uh, and rendering images and uh, talking to the SD card and I2C devices. So I got all the pieces working on this, but I haven't finished the code for it. So my first pass of design, I tried to stick to just the capacitive buttons at the bottom. Uh, my thinking was kind of modeled after, uh, actually the Prusa Mini right, right there, um, where I could just use, you know, like a, a wheel, uh, like an encoder wheel or, um, you know, physical buttons. And if you didn't have a touchscreen, you could still navigate through menus and, and do all that sort of thing. But I found the experience to be kind of clunky, um, you know, and I just wasn't taking advantage of the, the touchscreen. So I, I went back to the drawing board and redesigned everything uh, for touch interaction. Um, I looked at, you know, other devices that have small touch screens like, uh, you know, the Apple Watch and other smart watches um, and, and tried to copy a lot of the good things that they have uh, in there. So one of the things that I decided early on was I was going to reduce the functionality, um, you know, it's such a small screen and it's just so hard to navigate through menus and, and click on things as it is. It just sounds like it would be hell to try and build a firing schedule on such a small screen. So uh, for that sort of thing, uh, you would still need to connect to it uh, with your web browser on your phone or computer uh, in order to create new schedules and, or edit ones. Uh, but all of the, the quick actions that you need, you know, to get connected to the Wi-Fi, to, uh, select a firing schedule to, to run it, to see the status, to stop it. Um, all those sorts of things you could do from the touchscreen uh, without having to open up a phone. So that's kind of where I drew the line. So let's walk through all of the different menus that we have. Uh, the home screen here has three different menus. It's got the Wi-Fi for scanning and connecting to wireless networks. Uh, it's got the settings, which has like the uptime, uh, you know, how many fires you've done, what units your kiln is in, all that sort of data. Uh, and then it's got the firing uh, menu. And so inside the firing menu, we have cone fire, uh, firing schedules, and set temperature. So inside of cone fire, you can set the cone number and the speed, and there's a optional delay that you can add. Uh, you can hit start. It'll show you the current temperature. Uh, it'll tell you how much time has gone by, how much time is remaining. Uh, you can stop the firing sequence. Um, once it's finished, it'll tell you the total time, uh, total electricity, and total cost uh, for that fire. So inside the firing schedule menu, uh, it will have all of the different firing schedules that you've built. Um, you can select one uh, and see all of the different segments. There's uh, an optional delay on this as well, and you can start firing uh, just like the cone fire. And it's got the same sort of uh, status screen 
and you can stop it and it shows the um the same sort of data at the end when the firing sequence is finished so the last option is to just set the temperature um, and you can set an optional delay in there as well uh, there's no end to this firing firing method uh, it basically just turns PyKiln into a simple PID temperature controller, uh, which is useful if you want to like melt metal or do something else that doesn't require a firing schedule. So I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about the design of the interface? Is there something I missed? Is there something that could be improved? Let me know down in the comments. If you guys like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell so YouTube will let you know when a new video is out. I love you guys, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.